Hey, Rice City fam, Pastor Gib here, and uh, it's always my privilege to break bread, uh, to open the Word of God with you guys, and um, I'm excited to be with you. I know it's a little uh, unexpected, right? We were supposed to be in person, and now uh, we're through uh, the screen. Uh, we uh, weren't expecting all of the snow that we've got. Listen, I'm from Michigan, and I wasn't even ready over the amount of snow that we got. I don't think that uh, we've ever had three snow days in one week um, in the last four years. So I'm not complaining. If anything, I'm saying take advantage of all the snow that you've got. Found, find your hill, you know, go sledding, throw the snowballs and uh, enjoy the time that we've had uh, together. And so Listen, I'm, I'm excited for today. I hope uh, that you are. Uh, before I share the word with you guys, I do want to do two things. I want to give a shout out to your pastor and his wife, Pastor Luke, uh, your pastor, my friend. Um, man, just the work that the Lord is doing at Rice City, um, you know, continuing to, to share the gospel and to advance uh, his kingdom upon the earth and um you know, it's a privilege uh, to, to be a part of, of your ministry and to share uh, with you today. And I would encourage you guys or ask you guys to pray for me and my wife as we follow the Lord's leading, uh, as we uh, plant our own church. And so um, let us pray and then we'll hop into the passage for today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you for your truth. We thank you for your word. And Lord, we're thankful for technology uh, today, Lord, that we can uh, continue the vision of, of sharing your word, spreading uh, your truth uh, and, and feeding your people so that they uh, may grow in, in holiness and, and in your likeness, God. And so I pray that you would be with us now. Uh, help us to glean uh, from your word and we'll thank you for it. So in your precious and holy name, all God's people said Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Mark chapter number four, Mark chapter uh, number four. And I want to share a message today called sowing seeds, sowing seeds. And uh, uh, Jesus is going to share a parable. Uh, we will be familiar with this parable about the sower and the seed. Um, but just to give you a little context, the Bible says that that Jesus is by the seaside. What does that mean? That means that Jesus is by a large body of water, right? If we think of like the inner harbor, think of uh, Jesus being right there at the inner harbor, at the, at the edge near uh, the water, and he's uh, with a, a number of people, and he begins to teach. And, and people continue to gather and come to hear uh, Jesus preach and to be with Jesus so much so uh, that Jesus moves from where he is and he hops into a boat and he uh, goes a little bit further and turns towards the people so that everyone can hear the preaching and the teaching of what Jesus is sharing. In other words, Jesus repositioned himself so that his message could reach the masses. Hey, Jesus changed some things intentionally in that moment so that he could reach more people. Hey, before I even hop into the message, I'm just sharing the context, but before we even hop in to the message, can I encourage you this year, 2022, to, to think of ways that you can intentionally reposition yourself to change some things so that God can use you to reach the message, to share the message of Christ, to reach one more person because you made that change, you made that adjustment. All right, let's hop into the passage. The Bible says, and, and he began to teach by the sea. And such a very large crowd gathered to him that he got into one of the boats and sat down. And the whole crowd was by the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables and was saying to them in his teachings. So that's the context this is the parable. Let's let's hop into it. Verse uh, four, excuse me, verse three and verse four it says, listen to this. Behold, the sower went out to sow. And as he was sowing, some 
seed fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate it up, and other seed fell on the rocky ground, and it did not have that much soil. Wow, excuse me. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth. And when the sun had risen, it was scorched because it had no root. It was withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on the good soil, and as it grew, it increased, and it yielded crop that produced thirty, sixty, and a hundred times as much. And as he was saying, he said unto them, He who has ears, let him hear. You see, this is the parable of the sower and the seed. And it's important to understand uh, the first thing that we see is that the, the seed in this passage is the word of God. The seed in this passage is the word of God. Jesus, as we talk about at the beginning, was repositioning himself so that he can sow the seed, sow the seed, share the truth of the kingdom of God. And if you look at verses 14 and verse 26, this whole parable is about the kingdom of God. Verse 16 says, the sower sows the word, the word of God. Verse 26 and this passage, uh, once again, talks about the very fact uh, that the kingdom of God is the, the picture that is being painted as Jesus is sharing the parables. The word of God is important. It is essential. And that is why we must intentionally share God's word. That is why even uh, when it's canceled today, or in other words, when we can't meet together, I'm behind a screen uh, sharing the word of God with you because we need to sow the word. We advance the kingdom by sharing his word so that others can hear and respond to it. We see uh, that the, the seed in this passage is the word of God, but the soil, the soil is the condition of their hearts. You see, this passage verse, from verses three uh, to nine talks about different uh, conditions in which the farmer spread the seed. The first one had to deal with the street. The farmer throws it on the street before he even gets to the land. And the passage says that the birds fly and eat it up. When Jesus shares this portion, he wants to make us aware that we uh, do have a savage, almost like that bird who, who flies down. And we have a savage enemy, the devil. In verse uh 15, he talks about this. It says, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word which is sown unto them. The Bible wants us to know that we have an adversary who does not want the word to go forth. He does not want uh, the kingdom of God to be advanced and people's lives to be changed and people uh, to be up following and doing the will of Jesus. The devil does not want that. Our adversary is against the advancing of the kingdom. And God wants us to be aware of that. He also points out uh, not only the fact that, that we have an enemy, the opposition, but he talks about the soil. He says that there is uh, stony ground. In other words, there's, there's this surface that has rocks in it and it's shallow. And it's so shallow that, that when you were to sow the seed, that, hey, the seed will land and, and it will fall, but because it's so shallow and so many rocks in it, it won't be able to sprout up. There's, there's no roots. It, it, the, the soil needs to be tilled. And then he talks about thorny ground. And this uh, thorny ground is the ground that chokes up. In other words, uh, when you have weeds, they, they choke up the things that are trying to grow in the garden, or in, in this case, we would say the farmer's farm. You see, the problem was not the seed. It's the soil. Let me say that again, because sometimes we get it wrong. The problem was not with the seed. 
but it was with the soil. You see, we can blame, you know, uh, man, we, we just, the pastor just doesn't preach the word. We can blame it on, on bad preaching or we can blame all of our problems on, 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 on the church and everything the church has done wrong. But the Bible says we need to examine our own hearts to investigate our own soil and see which kind of ground, where the problems are coming from. You see, the Bible clearly shows us that, that the condition of one's heart really shows the disposition towards their response to the word of God. You see, when when it's stony and it's it's shallow, you the word of God isn't able to really take take root. And even if it does take root, it's unable to 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 sprout and to produce fruit. The the other is being choked out. And so as we think of the reality of the condition of our hearts, it's important for us to examine, examine our hearts, to ask the Lord, Lord, uh, what, what's going on in my life? Is it, is it me? Right? Um, the passage of scripture that says, uh, find in me, uh, try me and know my thoughts. Purge me. That's a, that's a bold prayer by David to say, God, reveal in me if there's any wicked way. And, and, and truthfully speaking, this passage really shows us that a lot of our problems in following Jesus is the condition of our heart. We need to regularly examine the condition of our heart because the word will not return void. God's word, that, that seed that is sown, even if it was a donkey preaching it, even if it was, uh, you know, someone quote unquote, that's not the best preacher that the word of God will not return void. And if we heed the word of God, if we do, if we allow the word or, or the Holy Spirit to work on us, then the foundation, then the root, then the core of us will begin to allow the word to set in. Let me share this with you because uh, it's so important. We, we talked about the, the seed being the word of God and the soil being the condition of our hearts, the, the condition of, of men's hearts. And it's important to understand that. It's our responsibility to sow the seed. We, we can't make a person respond to the gospel or we can't make a person uh, do the word, but we can preach the word and we can help them. But as Jesus was talking to his uh, disciples, he said, it's so important for you to understand this parable because it's from this parable that all of the others will make sense. He says, hey, listen, I need you to know that the disposition of their hearts will determine the course of the direction. And so when he shows us the standard here, it's the good soil. It's the good ground. And the truth is, is we don't start with good ground. The Bible says that we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That, that the farmer, let me, let me go back a little bit. You see, the Bible says that, that when you sow, you reap. So in other words, before you reap, you sow. And before you sow, you plow. You prepare the soil before you sow. And so in other words, when I tell you to examine your heart, this, this passage is, is pointing to us and telling us that, that sometimes people aren't responding to, to the word of God because of the dispositions of their heart. And as people of God, we understand that, that there needs to be a plowing, that there needs uh, to be some uh, process in which we uh, remove the rocks in our hearts, where we pluck up the thorns, where we allow God to have his way in our hearts and our lives so that we can say yes to the, to the seed that he sows in our heart, to that word that he places uh, within our heart so that, that, we don't, that, that we don't allow the worries of life to choke out the promises that God 
has shared to us. That we don't allow the fears uh, that we hold to cause us to doubt the word of God. And, And so when I think of a farmer who plows and he prepares There's a number of things that he does to to till the soil. You know, I think of prayer. I think of the communion with God, that that relationship and and communicating and talking and and being with God. I think of confession, right? We just talk about confession being agreeing with God, saying the same thing as God. You know, the first first, uh, movement towards change is being honest, is agreeing with God and saying, God, that that is a stone that needs to be removed. That is sin in my life that I need to get rid of. Hey, these are worries and things that I've allowed, uh, idols that I've allowed to, to take your place in my life. God, there, there's, there's, let, let's get real personal right here. God, um, inflation. God, these, these, God, I, I can't tithe right now. I can't, I can't give of my money. Just, you see what this world is like right now. And the reality is, is we need to agree with God, with his word through confession and saying, God, I agree. These, these are some thorns and some stones and some, some rocks that are making it difficult for me to receive and to meditate. Yeah, yeah, that word meditate, to meditate, to continually to to ponder. When you think of regurgitating, even though I hate that word, it's that concept of, of, of day and night allowing the word of God to dwell in you and, and, and to go from knowledge to, to understanding and from understanding to, to wisdom, that meditation aspect. And so... Uh, I'm, I'm saying all of this because this passage shows that the that the standard that that what we ought to desire is to be the good soil, and, and we have to understand that that to be good soil we have to allow the spirit of the God and uh, the spirit of God to to work on our lives. God allows certain things to 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 remove, uh, you know, some some of the blinders from our eyes and. And to point us and, to, and to, to bring us closer to him. And we need to realize those things and submit to him. And so there needs to be a plowing. We plow through confession, through prayer, through praise. What do you mean by praise, Pastor Gabe? I mean that sometimes we need to praise God even when our circumstances don't seem praiseworthy. Does that make sense? So, so, so Job teaches us. That even on our worst day, God is worthy of praise. That's that's huge. But but what I'm saying here is that when God begins to, to till and to work on your heart, God is saying, hey, praise me even when the victory hasn't come yet. Even when you're still dealing with that circumstance or that situation. Uh, hey, place your faith in me in that situation and I will work those things out in your life. So we have a prayer, we have confession, we have praise. Uh, another area outside of preparation is protection. When you, when you think of the farmer who uh, protects the most important thing, his farm, right? Because it is, it is the land, it is the soil that produces uh, for his living, for his livestock. And so we see that scripture says that the bird will, will come down and, and pluck at it. But the farmer would even uh, place, you know, a fence or, or a hedge around it uh, so that his valuable, precious soil would not be plucked away when it begins to produce fruit. Scripture says, guard thy heart with all diligence for out of it is the issue of life. So the reason it's so important to understand uh, this passage is because God says, hey, listen, he wants us to be people who bear fruit. He wants us to be people who bear fruit. And scripture says in John 15, 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. 
for without me, you can do nothing. Wow. So God is saying that the standard, that the good soil, which will bring forth fruit, we can only bring forth fruit if we're connected to the vine, if we're uh, abiding or remaining in Christ. So in other words, hey, if, if we stay connected to Christ and stay in fellowship and communion and prayer and fasting and walking with him, that he will produce, he will work in us and through us to do the good that we could not do on our own. In fact, I love Psalms, and we know this. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his, the law, is in the light of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be planted like a tree. Uh, he shall be planted like a tree by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The good soil and the blessed man, when you compare them, they are those who delight in the word of God. They are those who meditate, who ponder, who allow the word of God to, to work on their hearts. To, they, they allow God to, to continue to, to till the soil uh, so that they are planted firmly, excuse me, planted firmly with the resources of God producing fruit in his season, the right season, not us trying to manufacture things, but, but when God allows us to be planted and we walk with him, he will cause us to produce fruit. 